So what's the typical SOP for using this machine? So let's say that in this situation, we're going to be doing solvent recovery. Perfect. So typical SOP would be just to take your room temperature uh, micella, which is your crude mixed with a solvent, and it can be, let's say, ethanol in this case. So the warmer that we filter at, and I'm not saying hot, but the warmer we filter at, the faster it's going to flow. So say we tried to filter this at minus 20 uh, Celsius. Number one, the system is not rated to, to be uh, operated at those cold temperatures. But regardless of that, it wouldn't work very well anyway because it, it would be so viscous, it would flow so slowly through the system that it wouldn't be uh, effective. As your solvent is circulating through the system, the pumps generate a little bit of heat and so the temperature will gradually increase. Fortunately for solvent recovery, higher temperatures, it flows faster. So you wanna keep this valve down here open. We're gonna keep this valve open. So your fluid, is your micella is coming in from your feed tank in this valve. So we're gonna keep this valve open. You got your pump. You're gonna turn your system on hit start, and you're going to find the velocity that works best for your application. And so you're gonna have your flow meters over there. Your pressure is gonna be regulated with this valve right here. So it's a simple function of monitoring your pressure with this valve. And so you always want to follow the manufacturer's recommendations as far as never to exceed the maximum operating pressure. But quite simply, we are going to start with this valve fully open. Then we're just going to gradually close this valve gently when we're operating. And so the pressure is going to increase and increase and increase the more we close this valve until we come to our set point pressure. And that's pretty much it. You're going to come to a, you're going to come to a point where your system is balanced. Everything is operating as you need to, and you're going to monitor your permeate and your concentrate. And that's really it. Once everything is stabilized, that's all you need to do. It may take some playing around with the pump's speed and the uh, pressure to get the recommended pressure. But once you establish that pressure, it's pretty much hands-on. All you have to make sure is that you have enough feed coming through, that you know you have space for the permeate to go through so nothing spills or anything like that. But that's pretty much all you need to do. You're just regulating the pump's velocity and the pressure. That's really all that you need to adjust. Over time, as you're moving through your batch, um, the permeation rate will decrease because as the concentration decreases, permeation will decrease. You come to a point where permeation, because of the viscosity is so thick, and the balance and osmiotic pressure and all that kind of good stuff, it may not be feasible to continue operating because maybe when you started uh, your batch, you were filtering at 50 gallons per hour. Let's say you were doing winterization at 90 gal uh, 50 gallons per hour or solvent recovery at 100 plus gallons per hour. But at the end of the batch, maybe you're only doing, you know, something very slow. Um, and it's just not worth continuing. At that point, you've reached a concentration that's probably gonna be somewhere about two or three parts of solvent to one part of crude, and so the viscosity is so thick that not much can flow through it. You're done, you hit stop, open your valves, drop your pressure, then you proceed to drain your micella from the system just so you can get all of your crude or your concentrate out. And that's really it. From there, you proceed to flush and you're done for the day. If you're going to do subsequent batches, so one batch after the other, what we recommend is that you simply bleed out the micella that's in there. Just get rid of all of that. It's for a separate batch anyway, so just keep that with that batch. And then start again with another batch. You don't need to clean the system when you're going from immediately from one batch to the other, but you, you should follow the manufacturer's recommendations. And if they recommend that you clean membranes between batches, you should do that. Or if you only do that at the end of the day, you should always follow the manufacturer's recommendations, the membrane manufacturer.